to a yellow class. Today is Thursday, uh, February 16, February 16. All right. Um, so again, just some stuff here. What exponent is understood on the base X on uh, flavor? You can underline if you have a highlight. You can un underline base X so that you get used to that term. Um, we, we see the X. We know it's a base. Base because it's down low. Um, and a car, when you put on the base, the base is down low. Um, so whenever you have to guess uh, who's the base, who's the exponent, whatever's down low. Um, this one someone can answer. I'll just uh, if they remember it. Uh, what exponent is on the X when you don't see one? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's the one. You can go ahead and put that in. They just want to um, uh, want you to remember that. So let's see. Um, I might even write the X um, directly below and put a 1 on it just so it stands out and even circle that. Um, that way um, they're just reminding you of that, no big deal. And that's why I decided for the still first section that I'm going to do even if people are missing, it's the easiest stanza of the 4 that will be here. So it's easy kind of to fix if they miss it. But for those of us who are here, uh, we can have it first hand. Uh, let's see here. Um, this 3 to the second power. Uh, can be said differently. Uh, we're gonna write. Um, actually, I'm gonna write the regular three, and then I'm gonna see if someone um, will remember. Um, how do we say to the second power uh, with a word instead of second power? It's three. Good. Yeah, I'm good too fast. All right. Um, so I'm saying three to the second power. You might say three. Three times three is what it means. But there's actually another way to to say this guy. <laughs> Uh, squared is what I'm looking for. Uh, if you haven't heard it before, three squared. Um, just because sometimes the math is going to use special words for the two, the three, and maybe even the four. So three squared. Uh, and in case you have no idea well, why they say squared, it goes a little something like this. And in this part, you can mark down. Oh, let me ask. That way you say, hey, why am I ever going to do this in real life? This is the time. Everybody know why the second power is called squared. I would like to be the one to say the thing the first time. That way, when you hear, like, yeah, that math teacher, that one dude, he had like a, like a poster and he's like on the radio and he has a big bucket on the screen. All right, here we go. Um, so, the deal is this if ever you were finding the area of a square whose size happened to be three or whatever they happen to be, um, you actually multiply the two sides together. And because you find the area of a square when you multiply the same number times itself, you just say three squared. Yeah, nothing amazing, but just in case you didn't know it, now you do. All right, the second one in line. The second guy in line is that uh, five to the third power. For five to the third power, um, you know what, actually, why don't I put that three in red and that that in red so that it stands out. That's the point we're trying to make. Uh, instead of saying 5 to the third power, we would say 5 cubed. And now some of you might actually be able to guess. I'm going to still ask you if you guess. Can anyone guess why um, they use the word cube with 3? You are correct. That is when you're finding, uh, and this one I should put area, for a cube, like a box that you're going to put something in, you find out the volume of a cube. Whenever you hear the word volume, they're just saying, hey, how many little square guys, how many little cubes can I drop into this container? Uh, the volume, so if the bottom was a 5, uh, each of the lengths would be five, like on a, on a die. You got one die, you have two dice. So if ever you hold one in your hand, don't call it a dice, call it a die, D-I-E. You have one die, you have two or more dice. So again, if you have to do that, you multiply all three of these together and you get the volume. Okay. Um, and then the last guy in the group, that's seven to the fourth power. Right. Um, seven. We would say seven. So the seven to the fourth power. We say seven. <laughs> All right. Turns out there's nothing there. Uh, once they do the two and the three, uh, to my knowledge, there's no special name for seven uh, to the fourth power. So we'll just put it seven uh, to the fourth power. Uh, to the fourth power. To the fourth power. 
will taste one pub and uh, five minutes later or less, um, I should say to you, thank you um, for coming in and those of us uh, who will work together to either get six pages, um, to look up on a video for one of the standards, for what, any of those things that um, will get us for that, those who are caught up. Um, the benefit to being that. Um, the next page I'm trying to get to, which is page, is page one, two, six, six, Next page. Uh, yeah. 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 Anybody remember what you do to get the perimeter of a shape? In this case, happens to be a triangle. What do we do to get the perimeter of a shape? How do we add all around? So for this one, I just want you out to the first two pieces, and you put in the third piece. Uh, line them up as if you were um, uh, finding out the answer to these. As a matter of fact, I'm going to call this side A, this side B, this side C. I kind of wish I would have done them in different colors. I still have the power to do so. And then we'll do, uh, we'll set this one up and then the next one we'll get an answer and then we'll go on. I'll thank you for B and C, why not? So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to put in my A. I'll put it in red so it's obvious. Uh, so I'll do my A. Um, I don't know how long the B is going to be. Uh, so let's do plus my B plus my C. Um, C is in green. All right, so we're just going to set it up. Set up. Um, we're not getting the answer to it, but again, uh, combining in light terms of what this whole section is going to be out. So the five, um, there are five of the t squareds. I got five of those, uh, but I only have one regular uh, two. Then in this next one, I have a six t. I have six of those t's. When you think of the letters, I want you to think like a box or something, not kind of the generic letter. Um, oops, I did that in green. I should have done that in green. <laughs> Let's fix that real fast. So again, you're just setting it up. Um, hopefully somebody can see, the, oh, wow. I mean, they're going to get this feature three. Standard two, they're going to make this nice and easy. Um, yeah, for standard two, they're just going to uh, offer to you nice and easy. And then, of course, the last guy, I have three of these T2s. Sometimes I'll call it T2, even though it's T squared. I only have two of these Ts. And um, this should be interesting to see if anyone knows when you erase it right after. Anybody know what letter or, or what goes after the seven? Technically, there's a, a T2, a T1, and then there's actually a T something that goes after it. Yes or no? You, good answer. Not for this one, though. Good, uh, good guess. Good. I get to be the one to say it. Technically, every number that doesn't have a letter, especially in a polynomial, polynomial just has certain pieces, one piece, two piece, one term, two term, three term, is actually a T0. Any letter raised with zero power, and I'm going to erase that, so you don't have to put that zero thing in. I just want you to see it, you'll see it once. I can put a um, T0 on this red 2. I can put a T0 on this 4. With any number or letter raised with zero power equals, oh, anybody know what it equals? Zero. Zero is close. One. Any number or letter raised with zero power equals one. And seven times T0 is the same thing as seven times one. All right, let's get an answer. I don't want to go on the bottom. All right. We're not going to finish this one eventually. We'll come back and we'll combine the T2s, combine the Ts, combine the regular numbers. Um, but for now, I just want to set that one up. So again, the whole idea of uh, polynomials, uh, bazillion different terms. Yes, it's true. Uh, you should have bumped into this in, in algebra, but if you did, uh, they're going to give you a little gift and let you go up into it right there. Where's that page? It was 49. I'm trying to get to. Let's see if I uh, can that. Ah, 49. 49 has what I consider the easy part. The numbers where they're all positive. Nothing's the big deal. And then they have the part where some student, uh, whatever point they were introducing positive and negative to you, it's all messing you up. So uh, here's the deal. I start with 12 of these X4s. X4s could be a box, could be a gang, could be anything. Just think of it as a thing, and the... Ooh, what is that? What is the name of the number in front of a letter? Again. Variable will be the letter, uh-huh, but the number in front of it has its own special name. <laughs> Nothing. C. 
happy. So you guys just started school, and that's cool. Just this year, never been in school before. I like that. Like, no, we wipe our planes clean. One math class the next. So we don't want it to spill over and mix it together. It starts with the letter C. Constant is a good one. Q. Four, coordinate. Clifford. Clifford is on. All right, let's go. Let's go. I get to be the one to tell you that the number in front of a letter is always called the co. Yeah, too late now, though. I feel bad. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. You score. All right. Please put coefficient. Um, emphasis. Did I spell it right? No, efficient. There's too many of those. Okay. Coefficient. Efficient. All right. Uh, oh, shoot. My hands get on six. No matter what, I got to stop. All right. Um, coefficient. Let's see. Efficient. Weird. <laughs> I'm gonna spell it like that. I'm gonna put it in quotes just in case it's wrong. It feels like it's putting extra I in there. Well, they don't know, so you guys don't know. So <laughs> I feel like it should be. I'm gonna put another I in there. Coefficient. Yeah. Yeah, that feels like, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, uh, all right. Let's get this thing because I gotta go. Um, the coefficients tell you how many of the guys right next door you have. So I got 12 of these X4s. I, I'm going to um, Ooh, one other thing I want you to do here. See how they have adding and subtracting? I'm going to have you put a line uh, through that, and I'm going to have you write the word combine. Where's the end? Where's the end? Combine like terms. Combine like terms. Now, why they're throwing this back in? I guess now I see why they're throwing it back, because they know students would have forgotten the names of the guys in front. Um, if I have 12 of these guys, and I add 8 more of these guys, how many of the X4s will I have? I had. 12 to begin with, and I'm going to combine it with a positive 8. How many? I heard a 20 over there. I'm going to take that 20. Um, when you combine like terms, of course, if there's no sign in front of them, automatically it's positive. So when you combine a positive and a positive, you get more of it. Now, if it's a negative, the only way it can be a negative is if they put a sign in front of it. So there we go. Uh, can someone tell me what the coefficient will be for the um, x squared? Uh -huh. It will be a 1. And what's important is because that's a minus x squared, it automatically makes the 1 a negative 1. So when it's time for me to combine this 1, this negative 1, with this positive 3, I'm going to get an answer. Um, so again, uh, somehow I should say that I have a um, negative 1 of these x2s, and then someone gave me 3 more of these x2s. I kind of want you just to feel like they're a thing. Some people try to add the exponent, like, oh, well, you mean it's going to be an x4? No, no, you don't do anything with it. It's just a thing that the front number tells you how many of that thing you have. All right, um, someone in here who feels okay with negative 1 plus a 3, 4 is a good idea, but that negative one's going to mess it up some. All right, 2, uh-huh. Uh, I'll give us a 2 there. What I'm going to do, though, with that plus 2, if I could for just a second, and this is me wrapping up, because I'm not going to do another one besides this one, I just want to remind um, us, just in case of... Um, um, the positive and negative things mess you up. When I used to teach junior high for seven years uh, it, um, in a traditional classroom. Sometimes if we do it this way with a negative one, we put a uh, uh, negative bar for that one, and then for the positive three, we put three of the plus signs. Because uh, again, when the signs are different, anybody who has a partner, they cancel out, and whoever's left over, we got two of those positives. Um, that's one way we would do that. Um, that way, some people can. Some students could see it and that, oh, yeah, clearly I have two of the plus signs. Uh, if it were reversed, and I'm about to end right now, let's say I had three, let's say I had this negative three, I'm just making up a problem here, plus the one. Uh, and again, uh, let me make it plus one in red, then I'll let it go. Plus one, just in case someone had forgotten this, the way they forgot coefficient, they forgot something else up there. Um, but it goes like this again. I could put three, one, two, three of these negatives and just one of these plus guys, just in case you forgot it. And again, the rule is, the guys who um, have a partner, they um, cancel out, they kill each other, whatever version of it you've heard. And what's left over is that I have two of the negatives. That's how many dashes I have. And that's one way if it helps you. In any case, yes, believe it or not, standard two uh, will have something this straightforward. Next time when we see it, they're going to try and 
twist it a little bit by putting uh, some negative signs in front of a parental seat, and that should mess up at least a few of us, because uh, they don't want you all to, um, they don't want everyone to succeed. Um, so with that said, um, that's the main thing I just wanted to have you taste, make sure you got that in your hand, but not do too much just in case uh, some people didn't make them.